everyone welcome back so today's video is going to be another cook along with me as i make dinner and i'll be making um pork and turkey meatballs from natasha's kitchen i'll include a link to her blog with the recipe in the description box and we'll be sir i'll be serving that over a white sauce and buckwheat So for today's dinner, I'm going to measure out four cups of buckwheat and I cook it at one cup of buckwheat and two cups of water per cup. So I'll put in four cups of buckwheat and I'll add eight cups of water. Now, generally we when we cook buckwheat, we we go we lay it out on the table and we pick through it and pick out all the all the dark pieces of buckwheat and any dirt and you sometimes you'll get like little rocks um i like the buckwheat that i buy I buy it at um a russian store we have here and it usually comes up pretty clean for me so i didn't bother so going through it this time and it was actually it came up very clean and when i did pour in the water whatever floated up i picked it out um so i was fine with I was fine without having to sort it, but sometimes you actually have to have to go through it. Um, so I'm gonna add the water, put put the buckwheat in to cook. You literally cook it like rice. So you'll put it on the stove, cover it with a lid, bring it to a boil, and then put it on low. And just I don't know how many minutes. I just watch. I eyeball it. But I'll include a recipe from Natasha's Kitchen as well with instructions on how to cook the buckwheat. My my family really loves it my kids love it so and i actually made extra so we had enough for the next day and they and they had some for lunch so now that the buckwheat is cooking um i i do not actually follow the recipe well i do but i know it by heart so i just kind of eyeball it now so once you if you want to cook buckwheat um go by the recipe that i will include in the description box um but i'm gonna bring it to a boil on high and then i'm put it on low and let it cook for another 10 15 minutes i'm gonna I, i'm just gonna watch it and check when it looks like it's ready um now i'm gonna peel the onion and guys this onion burns so bad i was crying and tearing up and my eyes were just everywhere i oh my goodness i do not like dealing with onions i think there's two things i don't like doing and it's onions and potatoes i don't like peeling potatoes they don't burn but i just don't like the process but it's all right. Um, so I'm going to chop the onion. I'm going to prep everything for the meatballs and start mixing it up. Uh, let's see what else. I'm going to grate the onion. In the recipe for um, that Natasha has in her on her blog, the recipe says that you blend it, but I didn't feel like pulling out my blender or a food processor more like it. I didn't I don't have a food processor and I didn't want to deal with my blender, so I just grated it on a cheese shredder. No, I shredded it on a cheese grater. I think that's more like it. Um, yeah, there you go. And mine, as you can see, I use it all the time, so it's all bent and weird looking. But it still does the job, so I'm just going to go ahead and um, get everything prepped. I also wanted to quickly talk about these scissors I'm using. And as you can see, the onions are still burning our eyes. And I actually just learned this thing where cold the mist from cold water helps your eyes when they're burning from onions so I tend to do that a lot when I'm chopping onions I'll walk up and um, I'll turn on the cold water and just kind of like stare at it and it helps relieve the stinging okay anyway back to my scissors I got these for Christmas a few years back and I think they're like called like herb scissors or something like that something obvious <laughs> but um they're really cool I use them for all fresh herbs that I I mean and as you can see like right now I'm kind of like cleaning them out because the herbs tend to get um, stuck in there but it's okay I mean it's a small problem and it doesn't really bother me and they they clean easy if you wash them right away and just let them air dry um, 
I really like them and it's a really cool trinket to have. Okay, so I am doubling the recipe actually uh, just because there's a lot more of us and my kids tend to love meatballs. So I'm, I'm doubling, I'm putting in twice the amount of meat of ground pork and turkey and doubling the egg. And when I season it, I actually just always eyeball the seasonings unless I absolutely need to um, need to get the right measurements but when it comes to certain things like salt garlic powder onion powder um stuff like that I always eyeball it just because like I kind of go off when you cook all the time you kind of get an idea on how much meat you have how much seasoning you'll need to get a good taste out of it and um to get good flavors through the whole thing and then after I mix it I'll add a little more just because I felt like it needed a, a bit more and they turned out perfectly flavored but I suggest that if you don't know how to eyeball it, definitely go by the recipe and adjust as needed. Okay, so the first batch of meatballs is ready and I'm putting it in the pan and I actually, after I read the recipe and the instructions, I actually really like Natasha's method because you don't have to cook the meatballs through all the way and my concern was always like, are they cooked inside? Are they cooked inside? And I was worried and so then like you, I would brown them like big time and then they'd be like dry and but you know, because I'd worry they'd be... Um, raw but this method you just brown them lightly the first batch I kind of browned them a little too much so I had to lower the heat but you brown them lightly on both sides and then you pop them in the oven and it cooks them through really nicely and they are still juicy and not dry at all
So I'm going to cover the meatballs with foil and I learned this trick a few years a, a few years ago that you cover the foil, you put the foil on shiny side down that way it pulls the heat into the pan and cooks evenly because if you do the shiny side out the heat does not go into the pan evenly. Okay, so while I have the 10 minutes for the meatballs to cook in the oven, I'm going to wipe it down, wipe down the stove real quick. I like to wipe it down while it's still hot just to kind of everything is still not dry on it and just wipe it down, get all the fingerprints off and just get it cleaned up. Okay, so this was kind of last minute because I realized I didn't have any salad for dinner, so I found some string beans and mushrooms in the fridge, so I went ahead and just mixed it all up with some garlic and olive oil and salt, and I popped it in the oven and just roasted it for like 10-15 minutes until they just, they looked like they were ready, and um, it's a pretty big hit here. Everybody really likes them, and it's kind of one of my favorite ways to cook it. Okay, so as a last and final step, I'm going to I'm going to make the gravy and it's a chicken-based gravy and I don't have a recipe for it. I literally just eyeball it. I kind of make my own gravy. You can literally use any gravy you want. You can buy it at the store, you can get it in a can, you can go off of any recipe you find on Pinterest. I wrote down the ingredients that I used for my gravy and this is a popular one we like to do. I just kind of combined all the flavors and seasonings that we like in our food and made a type of gravy for the meatballs. Okay, so I brought the gravy to a bubbling boil and I started to add the meatballs into the gravy and then I kind of just like let everything simmer together. Um, that gives them the flavor. And so now that everything's ready, I'm going to serve the food. I'm going to put it in the plates and I usually just fill, I serve the plates with the food on them already. I don't actually just like put the food out and let everybody fill up their own place just because my kids are small and I also do Paul's plate as well and then he just refills it as he goes. Um, so this is the end of my video. If you guys liked my cooking video let me know below. Give me a like. Um, if you find my recipes interesting let me know. Um, I just thought it would be cool to share the certain recipes that work very well in large you know, what our large family eats and, you know, stuff that is very popular. And these meatballs were a big hit. They ate everything. Like even my pickiest child was like, mom, these meatballs are so good. I definitely recommend you guys try them. It was, it was a really big hit. I'm really happy because I was having trouble finding a good recipe for meatballs and I found it on Natasha's kitchen. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys next time. Bye.